Good evening, Jordan. This is Jared Gray with my co-host Jordan Rains, Fifty Shades of Drunk, what for up? the IDP Hour with the Full Time Fantasy Podcast Network. How are you doing, buddy? Good, good. Full Time Fantasy Podcast Network. We're just one of the many great shows over there. Thanks to them, we are able to do this. So, yeah, happy to be here Wednesday night. That means tomorrow there's football. You know, Defensive Player of the Year, Minka Fitzpatrick, is to run out on the field. Do what he does. I mean, you you did call that last week, saying he, he was going to be your defensive player of the year. I think he's got a pretty good matchup. He's, uh, they like giving it to the defensive over, linemen, so. but they like giving it to defensive linemen. But he's he's got five interceptions on the season, and the the Dolphins didn't want him, so he's making that, a pretty good two touchdowns. Yeah, two of them have been pick sixes. One of them was for like hundred <laughs> yards. <laughs> So he's he's kind of savage. All right, before we get to this week's games, let's let's talk about Monday because Monday, oh yeah, might be if I was to say SB for best game of the year of the year is going to be the 49ers again. I'm, for somebody to beat it would be shocking me. Niners against Seahawks Monday night. Yeah, that game was crazy, crazy. Uh, I mean, easily easily the best game of the year that I've seen, and I'm not a huge fan of either team personally. So. Yeah. For me to say that it was the best game of the year really does say something about it. Yeah. Well, I'm, you know, I'm a, you know, I live in Missouri, so I grew up, you know, watching the Rams and they're in our division. So, I mean, I'm very familiar and I knew that game, I knew that game would be a good game. Like, you know, had all the makings. I mean, unbeaten team, Russell Wilson's on fire, the defense on the 49er side, we knew they were stepping up. And it's just crazy that you had, you know, two defensive touchdowns in that game. You had, Crazy number of sacks. You know, Jimmy Garoppolo, who's looked good, looked like he was shook all night. Davian Clowney was in his face. Puna Ford was in his face. Jerron Reed was in his face. Like, there was just so much action on both sides of the ball. And I mean, I mean the every, Niners had two turnovers right in the red zone. Every so. every play felt like a big play in that game. Like, you're 100% right. It was incredible. And then it goes to overtime, and that kicker, that, that kicker got him into overtime like a boss. And then. On the same yardage. That he I missed. I know. Still, I mean, he 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 got him in that game. So you got to give him credit for that. He made the big kick. He pull on full on shanked it, and I mean, the thing is, you kind of saw it coming. That's the that's the crazy thing. You know, it's another. What, Russell Wilson wow. has never lost at San Francisco. Never. Hmm, that a, that's a crazy. You know, what's crazy is that, you know, both of them lost their wide receiver ones to start the game, basically. I mean, Emmanuel Sanders had, like, two catches and he was out, and then Tyler Lockett had, like, two catches and he was gone. And it was just, like, all backups. It was all uh, – it was crazy. I mean, like you said, could be could be game of the year. Yeah, I think it is game, game of the year. Uh, if I was – if I could be – if I could bet on an SB for game of the year, it was just like last year, the Rams against Kansas City Chiefs. You knew it was going to be game of the year. I mean – Plain and simple, there's no better game personally that I watched, uh, which is funny because last year was a huge offensive game. This year, huge defensive game, which is kind of what the NFL is about anyway in general. So to see that back back to fruition, I really think you saw kind of just craziness, and that, that was a lot of fun. Defensively, uh, too. I mean, Fred Warner had two sacks in that game. Like, Fred Warner had two sacks? Like, give me a break right now. Like, where did that <laughs> come from? And then DeForest Buckner, when he had two forced fumbles and a scoop and score touchdown, Jadavian Clowney had one. I don't know how many quarterback hits he had. Five. He had, he had five quarterback hits, but he he had um what nine or ten pressures. Uh, I didn't see that. I didn't look that much into it, but I know he had. He five had eight. Pressures. He had eight pressures before the fourth quarter. That's so insane. he tied. He tied with um, Grady Jarrett on the week with quarterback hits. They each had five, which I mean that's. that's they were behind the line of scrimmage the whole damn game, basically. Just ridiculous, to be honest. With you. It was a lot of fun to watch. It's just, just crazy fun. Yeah. Uh, okay, There's let's a lot get of big IDP stuff in it too. I mean, I'm sure, like we, I played you in that game. We'll have to talk about Marquise Blair real quick. You played him against me. You were up by like two points, and or I was down. I was up two points. You had Marquise Blair to go in. And he didn't go in, or he got hurt, or something. And I ended up winning. I was like ninety nine percent for sure to lose before the game started, and I won by two. Crazy! I, I didn't know you won, so there's. I'm, I literally just found that out because I didn't even look oh. at it yet. So wow. <laughs> it's wow. you're asked by two points. Um, because I, I thought I was waxing you going into the. You were. 
You were waxing me, and then you had like, and then Blair was projected a good number of points, and then I guess he got hurt. I saw Richard Sherman tweeted something out. Well, he Sherman was talking about another the other the Blair oh, on San Francisco, the San Francisco guy that tore his ACL. Okay, okay, that yeah. Makes- so uh, now something happened. I think something happened on the team, and that's the thing is you don't know really know what's going on in the background, right? Kind of like, did anybody see Vernon Hargraves getting released from the team this year? When he's yeah. averaging five tackles a game from the corner position, he got benched, and then he got booted, right? Preston Brown, yeah. Benched. Texans, Texans picked him up today. I and booted all that. Yeah, I kind of expected that. Uh, they, need they, help. they needed it, so they're banged up at corner. Yeah. Anyway, so Thursday or Monday night's game, incredible. I'm sure if you're watching this or listening to this, you know that because you probably had you probably had a little piece of the action. So yeah, for sure, definitely. I mean, overall, the best IDP week we've had. Of the oh, year, wow. crazy, crazy high IDP scores across. It turned all- into uh, what did we say? It was was it six touchdowns or seven touchdowns before Monday night defensively? It turned into nine. That's insane. <laughs> That's so awesome. So many seven, so many four fumbles this week. So many turnovers. The turnover rate this week was insane, which by default made IDP crazy. Yep. So uh, I never got to put up the. The sacks, but we'll put I'll put that up later today or later tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, total sacks for the week before tomorrow's game. So, cool, cool, pretty crazy. Uh, but let's get to tomorrow's game. I think it's it's fun that it's the Thursday night game, and I think it's going to be one of the better Thursday night games that we've had. Uh, last week's was pretty good, but uh, so a lot of people don't know if you're if you're not a big college football fan like I am. Um, Mason Rudolph and Baker Mayfield have had some pretty good battles at Oklahoma State and Oklahoma during Bedlam. So for them to be on rivalry teams, Pittsburgh and Cleveland now, and playing against each other, it just brings a whole new meaning into it, right? Because they were, you know, they're good friends actually. So to see them battling each other again in on a Thursday night in prime time, everybody gets to watch the game. Minka Fitzpatrick, like you said, obviously one of the you got to talk about him for Player of the Year uh, for defensive MVP. Um, you got to talk about how great Hayward, TJ Watt. I mean, I said beginning of the year I thought TJ Watt was better than his brother this year. I, th- I thought it was going to happen. I just have never trusted JJ's health overall. Well, TJ Watt's making me look like the man right now because that dude's averaging a sack a game the last what five games six games yeah he's so, playing, he's playing out of his mind i was saw something today nine games through nine great nick through nine games he's the highest graded edge defender in pff he has a pass rush win rate of 32 percent which is first in the nfl 22 quarterback hits which is first in the nfl three four or three fumble recoveries four forced fumbles I mean, nine and a half sacks, like you said. I mean, he's going to hit 10 sacks this week. Like, he's playing the Browns defensive line. Like, he's going to sack Baker Mayfield. I mean, we saw what happened when Nick Bosa got out there against him. Like, that line's the same line. And T.J. Watt is just as good as Nick Bosa, maybe better. So Yeah, they actually um, signed Treader to a to a contract extension at Cleveland, which is a little surprising to me. I'm a, mm. What has he done yet? So, I mean, they, I mean, Baker, I think, is the number one sack quarterback in the league. Which is close to it if he's not. Yeah. Uh, I know he's the number one hit quarterback in the league right now. So that sucks. And you expect turnovers out of your quarterback when that happens. Last week, they kind of kept him pretty clean against one of the best defenses in the NFL in the Bills, and they beat the Bills. So I think this is going to be one of those great games. It's either going to be one of those 24 17 games, maybe, you know, a couple field goals. Uh, I'm pretty excited. I, like you said, you, I expect T.J. Watt to get a sack. I expect Miles Garrett to get a sack, even though Pittsburgh's line has been so good. Yeah, Mason Rudolph is still a Mason Rudolph. They actually just added somebody, too. Cleveland did. Uh, Cox hmm. from Carolina. Yeah, they actually just signed him, like, yesterday or this morning. So Nice. I hadn't seen that. So that, that, that'll be interesting. That's just a little more depth on their defensive line. So we'll see what ends up happening. I think they need to get some more depth at the linebacker. So uh, that, that's going to be a fun game to watch for sure. Um, the next game, 
uh, that we got is, uh, well, the first morning game, I guess, uh, Jets against the Redskins. Uh, you know, the Redskins having a bye week, come back off their bye week. Jets are just a dumpster fire. I don't care. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, Jets, what, do you, what can you really say? Um, Matt Ioannidis for the Redskins, you know, is – Oh, he's got to be one of the better up and coming players, period. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, he's definitely got to be a start for the week. The Jets' offensive line isn't very good. Uh, they're back. You know, the Redskins ha- obviously have J- uh, Collins in the back. So I'm. I don't trust Darnold. Darnold might be one of the worst quarterbacks of the year right now. He's, he's averaging what? Two oh. or three interceptions he, a game. He looks like Blake Bortles out there, like bad Blake Bortles, not even good Blake Bortles, like bad Blake Bortles. That's funny, you know. Even Blake Bortles got some play last week, so <laughs> there's that. We're still living in a Blake Bortles world, baby. Um, yeah, so for me, Matt Ioannidis uh, is definitely a guy that I'm looking at starting. Um, the Jets, Jam- Jamal Adams had the number one scoring uh, fantasy defensive player last week. So he's a guy you always have to look out on. Uh, so that, that's going to be a fun one. Dwayne yeah. Haskins is getting a start from here on out. So I expect Jamal Adams to kind of do what he did last week. Yeah, I don't expect that big. Don't get, Let's not get this twisted. I don't expect that monster every game. That was crazy. He's still going to try and Debo him, though. He's he gonna... is. And so that's two good defensive games back-to-back that we can see. Um yeah, so you're right. I mean, those are both going to be defensive battles. Um, there will be a lot of a lot of play, a lot of action for IDP guys in both those. As far as the Jets linebackers go, where are we at with these guys? I mean, it's like Copeland and Cashman. Is Cashman still – Cashman's gone. He Dude, got, they're, they're riveted with injuries. Like I can't even keep up with, like, who their <laughs> starters are. Like, they've literally lost – it started with Avery Williamson in, like, July, and it's just every couple of weeks somebody just goes down. Yeah, it's just nuts to me. I don't know what they're really working with. It's funny the two organizations that have the uh, the most, uh, let's say, um, clinical or health issues revolving around their players, the Redskins and the Jets, they get to play each other. So they're probably all going to get mono. <laughs> <laughs> but there's just no telling at this point. I mean, these, these guys are just not staying healthy. It's just not a thing. So yeah. uh, to be honest, with you, not super stoked about the game uh, from from a crazy amount of points, but I do expect you'll – like I said, I've got a guy or two on each on each side that I like. So Matt Ioannidis, um, Collins, Jamal Adams, and that's pretty much it. So, Yeah, Quentin Williams has been doing all right past few weeks. I'd be interested in him if, in a deeper league or like a 2D tackle leagues. But yeah, I, in a deep league, I would have to agree with you. Uh I have to go with that. Um, might as well just pull this up for everybody. So they, this is where we are. Follow along at home. <laughs> Here for you. Here for you. Okay, let's go to the next one. Jaguars and the Colts. This is actually going to be another one of those defensive games, um, which I think one of your plays of the week is coming from. Uh, the Colts and Jaguars. Uh, Jaguars ha- are coming off a of bye week. The Colts are coming off of another tough game. So uh, it sounds like Jacoby Brissett's going to play instead of Brian Hoyer, which is good for the Colts. The Jaguars sounds like they're starting Nick Foles this week. Yeah, it'll be yeah. good to have him back. I mean, he got paid to do his thing down there, and I mean they're they're not completely a wash for the playoffs yet, are they? No, they have. They definitely. I mean, it's this is definitely a game they need to win against the Colts. Uh, they, yep. they definitely have to try to. So Nick Foles is walking right into a big stage yet again. So it should be. Yep. Uh, both of them have to have wins this week for sure, and it's you know it's a tough spot because I think Houston has kind of kind of got the lead in that division at this point. So they yeah, they're playing for something. a lot. Yep. Um, the Jaguars, you know, I mean, there's a lot of good IDP guys on this team. I mean, obviously their defensive line, Yannick Ngakwe, he's going to be my start of the week towards the end of the show. We'll talk about him more. And then Calais Campbell, 
and Josh Allen are all really good, solid plays for defensive line. I mean, you can play them all as DL ones. Um, what about Monte Nicholson? Is he a guy you think about? Uh, yeah, that's kind of throwing me off because he's on the Redskins. But I th- last I heard, he was hurt. I left him out of my rankings this week. I need to look into that and see what's up with him, though. I haven't really heard anything. Yeah, I'm not really big into it. Uh, so back to the Colts, Jaguars. Um, Colts on the other side, you got Clayton Gathers, who's been playing pretty decent. Darius Leonard's a must-start every week. Justin Houston is playing very well. He's a guy that I'm definitely, you know, you, you even said last week he's got to be a guy you're, you're going to stream to play. So Darius Leonard, there's no way you're taking this guy at your at your lineup. He oh, is. Yeah. You have to be crazy. Yeah, he's one of the top scoring players again this year. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a fun one, especially with the quarterbacks come back. You'll see how rusty each one of them is. You'll find out how much of a leader each one of them is. So if the Colts really think that they have their guy, you know, and Jacoby Brissett, we're going to find out real quick against the Jaguars. So, Fair and, and that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go to the Bills Dolphins. Uh, good. You know, the Dolphins are all of a sudden coming alive, starting to play pretty well. And the Bills, you know, coming off a of bye week, take a loss to the Browns. So I, I don't think the Dolphins are the Browns. Let's let me just start there. But it is at Miami. They're pretty close. Uh, I, I can see the Browns make a run. I, I don't know if I, the Dolphins aren't going to make a run. No, I mean, where are they running to in that division? Third? <laughs> well, I mean, if they beat the Bills, they're running for second. So, yeah. It's at the Dolphins, though, so that that could be interesting. The Bills have been off and on. Uh, their defense is playing sh- strong inside the red zone. They're, I think they're the number one red zone defense in the league. They've only had like four or five touchdowns in the red zone. Uh, so that would yeah. be an interesting one. Jerome Baker, he, he's been, he had a good, really good game this last week, um, Friday P especially. That's pretty much the only Dolphin I'm interested in playing. Um, Bills-wise, I mean, Matt Milano's been a solid all season. Tremaine Edmonds, boy, I mean, he bailed you out last week with that sack because, I mean, he had like two tackles, I think. But, yeah, he didn't uh, – well, yeah, the, the sack for the safety. So yeah. so that 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 did all, all his work came away. It's one interesting, play. though. He had a tackle for loss that wasn't um, – Recorded? That wasn't registered as a tackle for loss because, I mean, I watched the game like, oh, there's a tackle for loss. And it was at the goal line, so it ended up being for like for two lo- two yard loss. And then the very next play was a pass interference. So hmm. I don't know why I never got registered, but I, I mean I definitely was watching that game. So yeah, yeah, I don't know exactly what's going to happen with that group. Uh, so yeah, Jordan Poyer, you can pl- obviously he's a must. I'm definitely playing Jordan Poyer for sure. I've been playing Micah Hyde as like a. DB three for a while in a league, and he's been pretty decent. Nothing you know, if there's a deep streamer that we we're talking about last week, um, Stephen Parker for the Dolphins, who had an interception in the end zone. Um, didn't really have big stats after that, but if you're somebody looking at make, making big plays, he had like three or four interceptions in the preseason. So, and then to finally play for the Dolphins and have an interception in a clutch moment last week. He's a guy you you might have to look at maybe stash and especially in a dynasty league. You know he's young. He's in his second year, uh, playing for the Dolphins. So he's somebody that I'm definitely looking at uh, for benching by. You know for dynasty. Word word. All right, let's get to the next ones. Uh, this could be interesting. Uh, we got the Falcons, or sorry, let's get the Falcons a little bit. The Cowboys and the Lions. The Lions. This is one of those, like, I expect it to be on Thanksgiving weekend. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. these teams both play on Thanksgiving, uh, which is coming up for them, you know, in a couple yeah, weeks. Yeah, that is weird. It is, that is interesting. So to see them play each other the week before Thanksgiving is kind of interesting because uh, both teams will always play on Thanksgiving. So uh, so there's that. Um, this is going to be interesting because – it really depends if Matt Stafford's going to play or not. Okay, the Cowboys have had a pretty weak overall. I don't, I don't think he's going to play. From what I'm, been, it seems like he's trending to not play. Well, then I'm all about some Leighton Vander Ash. Leighton Vander Ash showed up last week, and and it's finally coming back after that stinger. 
So Leighton Van Esch, Jalen Smith, both playing real good plays. Xavier Woods has been a good play. Yep, he's been a great safety. He'd be more of a great play for me if Stafford was in, personally. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence has really stepped up the last two weeks. You know, made some big plays. Uh, he hasn't got – he didn't have as good a week this week as he did the week before, but he's a guy that you definitely – you kind of see him finally getting back to where he was. So – uh, it'll be interesting to see what what he does on the Cowboys side. No corners, I'm really like peeking on. Uh, so, no. Jalen Smith, Leighton Van Der Esch, Demarcus Lawrence, maybe Robert, Robert Quinn. You got to throw. Maybe Robert Quinn. He's been having. A, he's been playing great, dude. You got to play. He really Robert. has. Uh, and he's playing. Uh, if he's playing Jeff Driscoll on the Lions, I mean, I'm down. I'm down with that. <laughs> I'm down for that play. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. Uh, on the line side, I've still not no word on Tracy Walker. I know, uh, right? This guy is just like he was. Which means Taven Wilson is a must start because the Cowboys are still passing the ball. But they're for the lines have been very easy to run on in general. So Zeke is a must, you know, is going to be a guy that you expect to play well. So, uh, which is interesting because he didn't have a very good week at all last week against the Vikings. Yeah. Trey Flowers is pretty much the only guy that I'm confident starting on the Detroit team uh, for defense besides Tavon. Like you said, Tavon Wilson. Um, I know Kevin or Denard. He- yep, Ke- Kevin Denard's been all right. Uh, another guy, Jelani Tavai, stepped up pretty good last week. So Yeah, I was playing him a little bit early in the season here and there. It, Jalen Tavai, if he gets the snap counts, he's a good play this week because he's a good tackler. Yeah, I mean he's and, wiped out. He gets tackles for loss too. He don't. Yeah, he he's good. I'm with you there. Apparently, so, Aaron Davis is like one of the worst linebackers in the league according to Pro Football Focus. And he, well, uh, yeah. Well, the thing is, is ever since he got injured, it seems like they're still trying to play this guy. And we're talking about somebody we expected to be out for the season, the beginning of the season. So. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they're just trying to get what they can get out of the guy, but I think they're they're wasting their yeah, talent. They're, that I get. So. they're wasting they're wasting their time. But that's pretty much it for the Lions for me. Yep, I agree. Uh, Ravens Texans. Now this is going to be a fun one. Deshaun Watson, Lamar Jackson. You know, Patrick Onwasser seems like he's back to full play. Earl Thomas is playing very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Justin Reed. Seems like he finally started playing good again. Uh, yep. Whitney Merciless is, seems like been a guy to really step up since J.J. Watt got injured. Yep, Zach Cunningham and Benardrick McKinney, they'll both, they both have yeah. the attack. Cunningham's a must play, right? I mean, you would think. Oh, yeah, both of them really are, honestly. Uh, Cunningham, if you have to choose one over the other. but I think I had somebody ask me top. about uh, Chuck Clark again. Uh He's the most up and down player I've I've seen, so I'm me personally I'm staying away from him just because I don't trust him. So the guy will get, you know, he'll go from ten tackles or one tackle. So and he's getting more towards the one tackle because he's having like a five percent tackle ratio. That's not cool for me. So he's the guy I'm staying away from on the Raven side. It's cool to see Earl Thomas start to play well, though, personally. Uh, Marlon Humphrey is definitely a play. If, you, if you're in a quarterback league where you have to play a guy, Marlon Humphrey is definitely a guy who's going to be guarding DeAndre Hopkins without a doubt. Oh, yeah, he'll have plenty of tackle opportunities. So Plenty. Um, there's the Ravens pass rush. You know, it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly who the play is there. You know what I mean? And the Texans' offensive line has been a lot better lately. Um, they started out the season one of the worst, and the past few weeks they've been really, really good at protecting um, Deshaun Watson. So I might not tr- even try to play that game with trying to find a guy that's going to be defensive line eligible from from the Ravens. Yeah, it's gonna. That's an interesting one. And they've been rushing. Uh, it could be a shootout. To be honest with you, a little bit more too. So. Yeah, because I'm interested to see who's gonna who's gonna, gonna guard Marquise Brown. It's gonna be a shootout for sure. There's no way this does not just turn into madness. Like, there's no way this does not just totally melt down. I mean, thing is, is 
that's what that's what people want. They want to see Deshaun Watson ball out. They want to see Lamar Jackson Will ball Fuller out. Will back too. So they got Will Fuller back. We got Marquise Brown back. You got DeAndre Hopkins. You got probably the league MVP in Lamar Jackson. You got the guy who probably could be the league MVP in Deshaun Watson. And both their teams are playing really well. It's not like they're just like oh. – Yeah, this is definitely a week for Lamar Jackson to to kind of move ahead with – Yeah. To, especially with Wilson having a bye week. So – Notch in the bedpost, big dog. I mean, just take him down. <laughs> yep, I agree, I agree. Um, let's get to the next game, Falcons-Panthers. Which Falcons team is going to show up? The one that's been showing up for the first seven games – you know, eight games, whatever, and or the one that just beat the bricks off the Saints because nobody saw that coming, not a soul. No. So I just don't know which Falcons team is going to show up. I know who I expect to show up, and that's Christian McCaffrey. Every game, the dude's team-proof, doesn't matter who he plays. Yeah, Christian McCaffrey is a, just a god tier. Also another guy that's in the talk for an MVP – Going against a Falcons defense that has has not played good overall. Uh, Demontre Casey got hurt last week. Uh, Devondre Campbell seems like the better linebacker over Deion Jones, um, which you and me have been very high on him early in the season. Yeah, we even got Deion Jones is a huge disappointment. And if anyone, yeah, considering how he finished last year to what he did that has done so far this year. Yeah. Devon New Campbell has, is one of the And he's supposed to be their best defensive player. Like, that's the problem. He that's was third the or fourth last week of the linebackers, wasn't he? I'm not even talking about total team. I'm talking about just linebackers. Because It wasn't this last week. It must have been two or three weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Well, it was last week because Oluokun had a good game last week. I don't know. Devon New Campbell had a good game last week. Yeah. Deion Jones had like four tackles. Yeah, so it had to be two weeks back. Anyway, he's it was a, last week against the Saints. He had the bad game last week. Yeah, yeah. You said he had a good game. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm Devonder Campbell and Oluokun had a good game. Oh yeah, they did. Deion Jones was like fourth on the of all oh, yeah. the linebackers. Yeah, he's yeah. terrible. I mean, like he has less tackles on the season than Hassan Reddick has. I mean, and Hassan Reddick's been playing like played like fifty percent of snaps like five games this season. Like, yep, that's not good, bro. <laughs> that's not good, dog. And the crazy, that's bad shit. And you know, and when draft season was around, he was gonna. I gotta put some cover on for. Oh man, Let's, there you go, the pink, the pink, the oh, man. It's funny because I mean, the thing a little limp right there, dog. You gotta get at it. <laughs> you gotta start tackling. Yeah, bro. <laughs> All right, I'm just calling you out right now, Deion Jones. It's time to get to work because you're getting shown out. Yeah, you were a top five draft pick in most drafts. Yeah. Or at least a linebacker. It's just a thing. All right. Take my cover off here. Deion Jones, don't let me stop letting me down, bro. Fix it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, let's go to the other side. The Panthers uh, had a tough matchup last week. Also a great game last week to see the Panthers. March it down the field and almost win that game. In in the snow, right? In and the- it was a great game. It was. It was a beautiful was drive. Good. How many was it? Third and long. Kyle Kyle Allen's just like just throwing dimes to. He's throwing to dimes. Throw in the snow. Like, like, like they all performed exactly as they should have, and then they couldn't punch it in. The thing uh, is, I wish they would have ran the ball. Before. They should have ran it the first couple of steps, but the clock was an issue. I think they only had like twelve or thirteen seconds, so. They had to they had to pass and pass and pass and they're like okay well this is literally the last play so we can run or pass so I think that's why they ended up being okay yeah, running. I think if they would have because they knew their best chance of converting at that point is just yeah we would have given it to McCaffrey every time if we'd have like thirty seconds earlier but we didn't so and they had no timeouts <laughs> no nope. it was insane he is crazy uh, ass game he's 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 the real deal that it was a fun game to watch you know Blake Martinez didn't have a phenomenal game you know for once. Yeah, he yeah, I think a lot of it is because he just couldn't get his his feeding. So, yeah, the so, footing. Th- yeah, couldn't get his footing. I think this week's a really good week for the linebackers for the Falcons, with Hooper being out and going to be out for a month now. It sounds like at least this game just got a little more interesting. So Austin Hooper, my dog, Dante Jackson, I think is going to be a good play for cornerback against Julio. So just just calling it out now. 
do it. We'll see what happens. Um, so that'd be a fun game to watch. All right, let's get to this next game: Saints Buccaneers. Another one in the same division that has huge impl- implications because the Buccaneers are definitely in a spot to play for the division. The Saints obviously are, even though they got trashed last week against the Falcons. Yeah. Um, Real quick note back on the uh, the Falcons Panthers game. Brian Burns only played. 16% of snaps in week 10. So you cannot play Brian Burns right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Which is crazy. I mean, I know I know he got, he got the naked up two weeks ago. Well, he had surgery a couple of weeks back, and he just has not been playing the same since. And they've, for whatever reason, they've been playing him too. I don't know why they've been putting him out there. He played a little bit last week as well, or two weeks back, but he played almost nothing this week. Yeah, he's a guy that I'm not that I'm not streaming, especially against the Falcons. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's a game where I, I want to see him snap on a wood claim. So what? I want to see his snaps over fifty percent before I put him in my lineup. I agree. I mean, he's still a guy that I'm keeping uh, in dynasty leagues because oh yeah, for sure. He's still, he's still just a rookie, guys. He's their, so. he's their future too. You know, I mean, they drafted him high because he was a high draft pick. I mean, he was legit, and he's shown that he can ball, but. What's up, Russ? Yeah, shout out, shout out the IDP Army. We forget to address you guys by your proper names. Hashtag IDP Army. Yeah, we're changing IDP week in, week out. Just one one little soul at a time. So. A little shout out for you, bro. Appreciate it, appreciate it. All right, sorry, we're, we were at the Saints Buccaneers. Saints Buccaneers, uh, let's get to this. Uh, obviously, JPP is a must start. Um, he's played great since he's been back. Um, Agreed. He didn't have a great physical game last week, but he was still heavily involved. So he was definitely made some plays. He just didn't show up on the stat sheet the way you wanted. Yep. Um, Shaq Barrett is definitely a guy that I'm looking at playing. Um, it's a little different when you know Drew Brees is back there because you just don't know if, how fast he's going to get it out or if he's going to hold on to the ball. So he took what like six sacks last week. So. Which is crazy for him. Period. Yeah. So uh, it's it'll be interesting to see what happens with him. To see what happens in that game. Uh, Buccaneers obviously just let let it go. Hargraves that we just talked about. Um, the back end. Uh, this this is going to be one of those shootout games. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be just like every Buccaneers game that we've seen so far. Um, I'm going to see a you know 21 to 28, 20, maybe a 28 35 game. Uh, I have no pro- I could see that no problem. Yeah, especially after the way the Buccaneers defense was kind of or not the Buccaneers defense, the Saints defense was not like super great last week, you know. I mean, they let the Falcons beat them and the Falcons are I mean, Matt Ryan's coming back off an injury. They're in the dome. So, you know, this is a division game. They might be a little shook and you know, Jameis ain't scared to just take his shot. We've seen it. Oh, Jameis will sling it. He don't care. Yeah, you know, once you've seen it a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> so they could get out of hand for the. And we saw that the Saints couldn't come back either in that game too. Once they got down, they couldn't do anything. No, and they, they the they Buccaneers defense is one hundred percent better than the Falcons defense. One hundred percent. Like they have. Much, yeah. So this. I'm very you said I'm interested to see what and the whole narrative for the Saints could change like that too if they lose this game. So I'm really interested. Oh yeah. How I mean how things go. They were we were talking about one of the top playoff teams to Marshawn Lattimore didn't practice today either. He threw the hamstring. So I mean Mike Evans, I mean, this is literally a Jameis Winston wet dream right now. Like So what you're saying is is I'm starting Winston and Evans in my other league. Oh yeah. You got oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but Buccaneers side, I mean, their defensive line, JPP, Shaq Barrett, obviously, duh, starts. Levante David, that's a duh start. Devin White, he's up and down, but he's a solid linebacker, 2-3, you know what I mean? So I'm fine starting him. You know, let's talk about somebody real quick on the Saints side. Gave you a little little shout-out this week. Demario Davis retweeted one of my tweets. Sh- shout out Demario Davis. Appreciate you, my dude. You balled out last week. He also. Hey, when you yeah. get the ball, you get the call. Of course, yeah. saying, well, we're going to give you the call because IDP does not get any love. Demario Davis balled out last week. Yeah. And I, honestly, I could see it easily, no problem this week, the same thing. 
Oh yeah, and he was so, feeling it too. Like you saw, if you were watching that game, like he took over that game. Like he was he, the only, he was the only really positive thing on the Saints side. So shout out him. He had a great game. Um, and you know, fantasy football IDP. You know, give us a shout. We love we love uh, the IDP Army. We love guys that are in the IDP Army. And he he went to battle for you this last week, guys. And uh, he probably helped you get a win if you had him on your team. So yeah, I'm with you. He's definitely a guy that is, continues to play very well no matter what the team's doing. So. Uh, shout out to him. Thanks for the retweet. So, all right, let's get to the next game. This is going to be a fun one. Broncos Vikings. The Broncos came came off a pretty good win against the, the Browns a couple weeks ago. The Vikings just came off a good win against the Cowboys. But it's at at the Vikings. So, bloodbath. Bloodbath. <laughs> Daniel Hunter has two sacks in this game. Easy. What about Everson Griffin? Because I mean. He got two as well. Some, some, some he's, he's got Griffin and not got Daniel Hunter. Who's even? Who's the starting quarterback for the Broncos right now? Like I literally have no idea. It's got to be Allen, right? I I don't know. I I, don't, I have no clue. I mean, especially after the win against the Browns, Allen's got to get the. All right. Well, I didn't, I didn't even watch that game. Like I didn't know. I just knew that Flacco had lost his job. I don't have any Brown. I don't have any Broncos in fantasy on either side of the ball. I have Royce Freeman in like one league, but so. Anyway, yeah, it's gonna be a bloodbath. He's gonna get completely. He's gonna get destroyed in the dome. Vikings, Everson Griffin, lock him in for a sack. I say, you know, Daniel Hunter, lock him in for two sacks. Um, Dang, you're saying it's gonna be a whooping, dude. Miles Garrett, none of those guys got two. Allen, none of. Man, beginner's luck. Beginner's luck. I mean, I mean it's crazy how many good. They you know, were, I mean, Miles Garrett, Miles Garrett, but he he's not Daniel Hunter. And he doesn't have Everson Griffin on the other side. So I love Miles Garrett. And he's pretty close to Daniel Hunter, but he's not Daniel Hunter. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. Daniel yeah, Hunter's got a long record. Miles Garrett. I don't know about that, bro. Long guys in the dirt. Daniel Hunter's real legit. Let's not get let's, I mean, he's an all pro. Oh, all pro. He's probably going to be at the end of the season. At the end of the season, if he's not a top three defensive lineman in IDP, there's no way. Miles Garrett, he could finish outside of the top five right now. He could. Doesn't he have ten sacks? He does have ten sacks, but he doesn't. He has almost no tackles. He's got, he, got, he got under thirty tackles. Daniel Hunter got forty five. <laughs> yeah, so that's, like, that's like two more tackles a game. Plus, he got more sacks than him. Well, wait, they each got. He got eight and a half. But I mean, again, he's gonna have two this week. Okay, I guess we're gonna see. It's gonna be a good game either way. So, yeah, baby. For, for the defensive side, Justin Simmons is a must play. You think, right? I don't know. He's one of the most – to me, he's the most he's the hardest to, player in IDP to gauge. I expect Dalvin Cook to get through the, the middle group, right? So, I mean, I, I expect him to get to Justin Simmons, which means Justin Simmons is going to have the opportunity to get tackles. Yeah. Well, the the Vikings can move the ball. So, yeah. I mean, I think he's going to be a good play. But, like again, he's hard for me to gauge week in and week out for whatever I reason. About, about Kareem Jackson. So, I mean – it's the same way. I mean, I don't know what linebacker to play at Denver because no, he, he I've got so many questions about AJ Johnson and Todd. Well, it's because he, he he'll he'll suit up, have a phenomenal game, and then bye. Where'd you go? Like disappears. I mean, Eric, he had three games in a row. He scored twenty some points. Yeah, he and then awesome. and then he had a goose egg. So thanks, buddy. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to put your finger on them. You know, I mean, like yeah, these guys that you don't know what their actual role is, they don't have a long track record. I mean, you can plug them in as a a three and hope to get lucky. You know, and if he hits as a one, that's great. But you can't really count on that until they do it repeatedly in week in week out. You know, year in year out. So, like talking like a guy like Eric Kendricks on the other side of the ball, like. He hasn't ever been this high level of a, a linebacker one. He's always kind of been on that low level linebacker two or low level linebacker one, linebacker two area. But this year he's a top tier option linebacker one. And he's shown that he can consistently be in that range. And now he's like having a really good season. So those are guys that you're really, you know, you, you're locked in starts, you know, you're, Brandon Copeland's and your AJ Johnson's, you know, these guys are, that's tough. I mean, when you get those questions, it's hard, you know, it's kind of like, well, who do you think is going to do better? I mean, I don't, I don't have much to look at more than you, you know? Yeah. It, it's a tough one because he's, he's a talented player, but what, what player am I getting? So mm-hmm. all right, let's get back up to uh, the Viking side. Obviously 
Harrison's a must play every week. Yeah. Kendrick has been playing very great. Um, you already talked about Daniel Hunter, Everson Griffin. So overall, it could be a fun game to watch. We both think the Vikings come out and kind of get get on them. They have momentum. Two great so, fan pieces too. So it'll be a good game. Uh, let's go to the Cardinals 49ers. Um, after the phenomenal Monday night game, the 49ers got extremely banged up. Man, it just injuries everywhere and not in good places. We're talking they're, they're tight end and Kittle, which means Buda Baker's not going against him, which means Buda Baker's against somebody else, which isn't good for anybody. Uh, yeah, that guy might not get targeted as much, and that means by default, Buda Baker could be in a situation where he's not able to get those pass deflections that he got like two weeks ago, and those high tackle numbers because they're just not going that way, you know. So it will be interesting to see how they game plan um, without Kittle, and the you know the Cardinals are pretty much at full strength on defense. Yeah, the Cardinals look good on Chandler Jones looks unstoppable right now. Oh, he's yeah. playing phenomenal he, ball. Leads the league in sacks right now, eleven and a half, and yeah, I mean. He's got a – you know, we just saw Jimmy Jimmy Garoppolo get twisted up by Jadavian Clowney. And anything Jadavian Clowney can do, Chandler Jones can do. So Yeah, I completely agree. I, I mean, he is a must-play. Uh, I, I picked him – I actually picked him up a couple weeks ago. Somebody dropped him. I was like, are you kidding me right now? I'm like – He had that one game where he had like nothing. And I, I he got dropped in two leagues I was in that were like redraft leagues. I was like – Well, he had three tackles for loss in that game still. He didn't have any sacks. And everybody was like, oh, I'm dropping him like – Bro, like, y'all crazy. Yeah, y'all crazy. thanks. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. yeah, keep doing that. Actually, that's I mean, a good yeah. Yeah. because Danny Trevathan freaking mm-hmm. destroyed his elbow. Yeah, and so I, I picked him up. Um, so I'll be honest with you, I can see the 49ers taking their second loss at San Francisco. I don't want to say that. That San Francisco 49ers defense, they, were, dude, they, were, doing work. they were doing work. They were doing they work got against Russell they Wilson. They got torched against the Cardinals two weeks ago. That game went to the fi- final couple minutes. You and that's why the 49ers hat are healthy. Hat bet. Let's do a hat bet. All right, I'll hat bet this one. All right, I got the 49ers easy. Easy. Okay, well, I, I say the Cardinals at minimum keep it within – you think they're going to win or, or lose? I think they're going to win, but I think right. at, a, at a minimum they're going to keep it within a well, touchdown. Let's do a straight win-win. And I'm going to take – You're getting a, a one-loss team against a five-loss team. I should at least get – No, this points. was your – no, this was all you. You came in hot saying they're going to – You know what? I'm play, you know what? My man Kyler is coming through for me. All right. There you go. I, just, I was just getting – Hey, where's the love for Kyler Murray? Murray? Kyler Murray would be ashamed of you. If he heard you trying to take a spread, trying to take three points. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't I? It's at San Francisco. Mm, I don't know. I don't I don't sports bet, so I don't really understand all that stuff. I mean, it's whether you like it or not, it's still a home game. But so, tell you, Cardinals. Okay, let's get this. We're already four three right, minutes in. I'm not this. gonna forget this either, all right. So you have to wear it on this the live on the live two weeks from now. You have to on the it. live two weeks from now, so you can go ahead and book it because we know you're gonna lose. Nah, bro. <laughs> have I lost a bet this this year? Actually, from me? you're right. Uh, I shouldn't have done that. I, I now I know the 49ers are. Going I'm to undefeated play. against Jordan and Betts this year, guys. Mm-hmm. Just so just so we're clear. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, Patriots, Eagles, um, bloodbath. <laughs> yeah, talk about a bloodbath. The Patriots are going to just walk all over the Eagles. It's it's at it's at the Eagles. It doesn't matter. Oh my gosh, Eagles are Jamie so much Collins, trouble. Dude, so I talk about plays of the week. Jamie Collins for me balls out against the Eagles. The Eagles are going to seem a little more healthier than they have been. Miles Sanders finally getting some play. People are running very well on the Patriots. I mean, dude, dude the dude. last two games, you know, Baltimore ran all over them. Cleveland ran for over 100 yards against them. They're going to completely it wasn't shut them. The game, they would have lost to Cleveland. They're gonna the the Patriots are gonna shut down Zach Ertz, thereby shutting down Carson Wentz, and that's just gonna be Miles Sanders and Jordan Howard. And I think they can, even if they're not a great running defense, I think that that's manageable. And we already know that um, Alshon Jeffrey is gonna be out for this game. I'm like ninety percent sure, if, if I remember that from earlier. So, what's up, Zach? Thanks for popping on. Yeah, well, this is our Thursday night show. We uh, we're literally just giving you a preview for the weeks. Uh, 
Thanks for hopping on. What up, dude? Yep, yep. So, IDP Army, what's up? Uh, back to the game, Eagles, Patriots. Jamie Collins must play. Nobody can play. Stephon Gilmore might be the best corner in the league. Um, Fair. I don't, about, know who, I don't know who the Eagles didn't torch. I'm, Tom Brady hasn't played a great passing game this year. He's gotten to kill Harry back. He's got Mohamed Sanu through a couple weeks now where they're finally going to have some Kill chemistry. Harry got Josh Gordon literally, like, cut from the Patriots. Yeah, bye. Like, literally, okay, he's back. See ya. Oh. Yeah, so that's a big one, right? So I'm telling you right now, James White balls out. Oh, Put him in your lineup. Yeah. Right? Eagle they, side. They've been very good against the run, though. <sighs> yeah, but he's not a regular runner, though. That's what I'm saying. James White is going to get. I'm talking oh, about yeah. six receptions here. And there's the linebackers for the Eagles. I mean, they're kind of another one of those situations. Like, who are these guys? Like, I'm not touching. Nate Gary. Um, I'll take. You know what? Nate Gary might be a good play this week. He might. I'm, pl- I'm playing him in that. I'm playing him in one of my giant dynasty leagues. But just the dump passes. I mean, you know what, Russ? I'm telling you right now, Nate Gary. Doesn't do what he did. What, if he does anything like he did a couple weeks ago, where he lets every single person down that we all talk about, mm-hmm. calling you out again. Down. He won't he, let he us destroy down. us. Because the Patriots are going to have so many drop, so many long drives, just like grinding down the Eagles' spirit. Right, well, and Carson Wentz is going to be so excited. He's like, let's go <laughs> get them, guys. For this, let's go out there for this three and out. <laughs> let's get ready. Three and out. Let's go. Yeah, baby. Aguilar, all right. You're running the deep post, right in a double coverage. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> I'm with you. I, I think it's going to be a bloodbath. Oh, yeah. I uh, feel bad for him. <laughs> you know what? Let's get to the next game. Bye week. Mm-mm. Raiders, Bengals. Finley is playing like trash. They got destroyed against Lamar Jackson. And the but Raiders' pass rush came alive this last week. So They did, man. I mean – we are Mayo played, played well. well. Mayo um, played well. Crosby played well. Farrell had a really good game. Okay, Farrell balled out two and a half sacks. I'm telling you, it could uh, be the exact same thing this week. Yep, because rookie quarterback, terrible offensive line. I mean, yeah, it's going to be – and the Raiders have been playing really good offense side of the ball, so they're going to put them in positions where the Bengals are going to have to be throwing, hanging in the pocket, and – I think it's going to be a good IDP. If you're looking well, for, I think Waller's going to have a good game. I think, I think the the safeties Bates and Williams again are always going to play well. Oh yeah, must starts, especially against Derek Carr, who loves to just throw right over the middle of the field. Yep. Um, let's talk about uh, Eric Harris. Is he a must start after last week? He yeah, two I mean, interceptions, one yeah. for a touchdown. I'm a yes and a no on that. Probably a yes. A yes he, on the base on the matchup, yeah. But I still don't really know how I feel about him overall as an IDP commodity because I mean, is this I mean this just could just be a few games. Joseph is out for the season. Yeah. Jason's out for the season. So You're right. For yeah. this season he's a must, he's a must start, yeah. Okay. I agree with you. I, 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 I think- heard the golden boy is not very golden anymore. He he's, hasn't played very good the last couple of weeks, which oh, he's only had like two. T- he only has like five sack tackles in the last like two weeks, I think. Last two, yeah, weeks. he did not play. I mean, what's like six points last week? I, it's going to be a tough one. Uh, he had a good game against the Raiders before, so you know, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to play him because the thing that was always nice about him was his tackle floor was basically five or six. That was and especially tax for, and he's a tag for lost guy. So yeah. But said last three, four. The Raiders, the Raiders are gonna dude. They're gonna run Jacobs like crazy. So we're talking. Ja- Jacobs is definitely a guy that we're looking at for rookie of the year. So he's he's gonna break. He might break a thousand yards this week. True. True. So he already he already owns the Raiders record for a rookie. Which yeah. He works down by I a still lot. think I think my final thought on ben, the, on uh, Sam Hubbard is basically he's a low level defensive lineman too. Until I see him go out and have another boom game, I mean it's he's getting harder and harder to play as somebody who plays him pretty much. Is Nick Vigil guy you're you're starting? I don't know. I don't have him in any. I'm in like eight or nine IDP leagues. I don't have Nick Vigil in any of them, so I don't know if that is the correct answer or not. But I've had so many injuries with Danny Trevathan. Uh, LV got hurt. You know, 
in a, in a few weeks. I mean, now that he's back, I'm, I'm good. But he's got him looking at streaming still. I think he's, I still think he's good for tackles, and the Raiders are going to run the ball like crazy. Yep, fair, fair. All right, let's get to, these, uh, to the last two. Uh, Bears or Rams, which – Another bloodbath. Well, I, you see that. What Rams team is going to show up? The one that just got pummeled? The one taken to the top of the mountain for sacrifice. <laughs> uh, it's come the little, Rams need to come back and have a good game. Cooper Cup had zero points last week, I think. Yeah, I it played. I played him in two leagues. It was great. The owner, <laughs> the owner was so mad. Oh, the one week the Cooper Cup doesn't do anything. I was like, suck it. <laughs> it's it shut him down, dude. I, I mean, have no sympathy for you. Which makes me wonder what Jarvis Landry is going to do against Pittsburgh this week. Tomorrow. I have I have Mike Evans everywhere, and I remember week three was it or four when he had zero, and I had that in like nine. That's weeks. when I traded I traded Tyler Boyd for Mike Evans every week. Remember we had that conversation? Yeah. And then I got obliterated in like the whole league. They're like, this is the dumbest trade ever. Like for him, oh, maybe. Yeah, for him. Anyway, <laughs> Ram side of the ball. You mean I feel like I feel like both sides of the ball. You start every IDP player because this is going to be sloppy and. Messy and turnover prone teams, turnover prone quarterbacks. The Rams just are not the Rams they were last year. You can completely erase yeah, that narrative. Okay. Comes back and finally starts to play well again. Clinton Dix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. I mean, the, that's the other thing, too. You can count on the Rams are going to throw because they don't have a run game anymore. So the well, safeties. And that's another crazy thing. If, if you look at the stats, my man averaged what six yards he carry last week. He had what ten carries for? They're still not getting the ball. I don't. It's they're are, they're doing their load management. Welcome to load management in the NFL. They're they're worried about about losing Gurley, which is hurting them because they're not I mean, winning games. Last week, they're playing for a wild card spot for sure right now. I mean, there's no way they're going to win the division. Exactly. So, I mean, you just if you want to get to the playoffs, it's time to hand your running back the ball. But whatever. I'm not Sean McVay. I'm not. I don't. You know. I'm just some guy. So whatever, <laughs> but I think you know Littleton. Obviously, you can start him. Dante Fowler, you can start him. Aaron Donald, you should start him. Um, Taylor Rapp, Eric Weddle, boom, 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 boom. All those guys should be in your lineups unless you have someone better. Which I, I agree, with Corey Littleton. Corey lives a ball out. He's one of PFF's highest graded linebackers, like every other week. Yeah, so. he's a beast. Yep, and um, then Bears Max playing really good. Uh, the Rams, obviously, Donald. Uh, who's the guy that we keep – I don't know why I keep spacing on this dude's name. I love him. He had another touchdown last week for the Rams. Oh, uh, J- Reynolds? Josh Reynolds? No, no, not, not the receiver, the the defensive lineman. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dante Fowler. Yeah. yeah. Fowler. F- Fowler's got to be a must play, right? Oh yeah, I had he didn't do much besides that last week, but against the Bears, yeah, obviously. I mean, Mitchell Trubisky's a dirt to dirt, he's a dumpster fire, bro. Yeah, so I mean, between I him, he's gonna, gonna be every week turnovers, dude. Turnovers. I'm gonna say this every week, and I've said it every week since they since they got him. Let's not forget the Bears traded up to get Mitchell Trubisky and passed on Patrick Mahomes to Deshaun Watson. I'm going to say it every week. Thank you. Right. Have a good day. <laughs> right. Yeah. And on the bear side of the ball, Danny Trevathan, as far as we know, he's probably going to be out based on what the injury looked like. Um, Nick Kwiatkowski. 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 Nick Kwiatkowski. Mike Wazowski. Mike Wazowski. That's what, every time I hear you say that, that's what I think about. Right? Well, Monsters, Inc. Oh, Disney Monsters. Plus. Disney Plus. What up? Um, anyway, Mike Krasowski, I mean, hey, Nick Krasowski. This, bro. <laughs> yeah, he filled in last week. He was also one of PFF's high, great, highest graded uh, linebackers this last week. He had like an interception, a ton of tackles, a sack. Um, dude's a beast. I mean, pick him up and play him. That's I think, he's play I think he'll probably outscore Roquan Smith because Roquan Smith is not that hard to outscore on a weekly basis. So <laughs> that's the sad truth. Roquan finally had a good game, and he still got outplayed by somebody who had to come in. Yeah, after the game had started. (laughs) All right, last game. Chargers, Chiefs, big game in the division, you know, big game in that group. They need 
the Chiefs need to come back. And I cannot believe they lost last week. Chiefs are going to stomp the Chargers. All I've seen the Chargers do is not be great. This last week they lost. They shouldn't have beat the Green Bay a couple weeks ago. That was just a miracle. They destroyed Green Bay, though. They did, but that was I mean, that was a fluky game. There's no if they play them again today, they lose. They play them again tomorrow, they lose. Hundred percent. Have you watched the Chargers play? It's not pretty. I, I, think- I watched the Chargers lose like four games or win, you know, by a field goal. Phillip Rivers is literally I mean, talk about Blake Bortles comparison. I mean, that's what he looked at I me. Mean, it's just like throw it. It's just like there's a guy down there, I'm throwing it and I'm not getting benched because I'm the best you've got. And if this doesn't go great, I'll be mad. He threw Harris back. last week. Huh? And he threw two picks to Harris last week, and it looked like Harris was oh, his intended receiver. He tried to, he tried to throw four. He, he, yeah. he, but he just, yeah, I don't know. He's, he's, he's hard to watch sometimes. I mean, he's a great quarterback. Don't get me wrong. When he hits, he hits. But this is going to be a turnover prone game as well, probably on his side. You know, Melvin Ingram, Joey Bosa, you can obviously start them. They're elite pass rushers. Um, Chargers linebackers, Thomas Davis. Looks like he's put himself back as the main guy there, but I'm still shying away from that whole situation. Same with their safeties. Um, you know, that's what I got to say about the Chargers defense. I mean, the Chargers have played well against passing teams. I mean, they they shut down DeAndre Hopkins when they played them. Little... But Patrick Mahomes is a cheat code, and Tyree Kill is one of the easily top three wide receiver in the league. I don't care. Anybody says he can play it. Jordan, no, you could say it. He's the best wide receiver in the to, NFL. To Jordan, he's the best wide receiver in the league. I think I think he's at least top three and probably number two. I think Michael Thomas is number one, personally. Michael Thomas is good for 13 receptions a game, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter who's guarding him. I don't care. I he's, he's, a, he's, the, he's the fastest player to 400 receptions. Let's talk about that real quick. So, yeah. Tyreek yeah. Hill is a cheat code, though. And the fastest player on the field, bar none, and no, Patrick Mahomes, an elite 50-50 ball catcher. I'm know. with you. I think it's going to be – I'm thinking they win by two he touchdowns. Best quarterback in the league. Defense, I don't – I mean, like, they'll probably win by at least a touchdown, probably 10. 10? Yeah. But – um Chief side of the ball, Frank Clark actually had a good game last week, finally. Last week, a couple of guys came around. Him and Frank or, and Demarcus Lawrence were a couple of them, but uh, he could have had a better game. Chris Jones had a good game. Uh, yeah. Chris Jones Clark, had a good game. Yeah, Frank Clark dropped an interception. He literally, like, caught it and then, like, did this thing with it and then dropped it. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> so, anyway, that sucked. But Emmanuel Ogba, he was having a pretty good season. Solid uh, defensive end. He's out for the season, isn't he? Yep, he tore his pec, so he's out like J.J. Watt. Um, yeah, a few tore pec tours this, yeah. this year already. That's weird. Iron Matthew remains a low-level defensive back, too. You know, Do you 10. think Javarius Ward's going to be uh, guarding Allen this week? I don't know. If he is, that's good because Allen's been getting a lot of targets but a lot of pass breakups, too. So I'd like to be the safety over top of Allen because that's – that's where Harris was. Thornhill had some kind of broken plays last couple of weeks from what I saw, um, just not playing. I think you might see an interception from Thornhill this week. Well, I mean, Phillip Rivers likes to throw them, so we'll see. Is this game at Arrowhead or is this game? No, it's, at, it's at San Diego. Or, sorry, I always say San Diego, at L.A. Yeah, there's too many teams in L.A. now. Bro, I mean, I hear the uh, Amazon owner wants to buy one of them. Hmm, Interesting. It's a rumor. Maybe he got the money for it. He does have the money for it. That's for sure. He needs to move him to Oklahoma. Oklahoma needs a team. <sighs> Y'all, come on. They would sell tickets at least. I'll tell you that. You probably would. St. Louis. got nothing else to do. Mexico City. <laughs> Zach says Mexico City. Honestly, if Jeff Fisher would not have been the coach of the Rams for the last, like, five years they were in St. Louis, we I mean, like, we have a great fan base in St. Louis. I mean, we have the Cardinals, we have the Blues. I mean, we're a sports city. I mean, we were where the Rams won their first Super Bowl. We have Kurt Warner. Like, we had it all. And then fucking Jeff Fisher came in and just took a big dump in the middle of the field for like half a decade. And no, like, Rams tickets were cheap. Nobody wanted to go. And it's just like they drafted Gurley. I got to see Gurley his rookie season up there. He was so good. You know, I mean, they had so many great players but they just had a bad coach, kind of like what happened with several teams the last couple of years. Oh, such a bummer. 
I, I, my closest NFL team right now is the Titans. Gag me. But I'm a Chiefs fan. That's only five hours away, so whatever. I, I do think they're going to try to put a team in London. To be honest with you. Oh yeah, it would. I'm think I've talk, been talking to my buddy at work. I think they're going to try to put a whole division in Europe, like a blank blank. Well, remember when they had NFL Europa? Uh huh. I had a buddy that played in there. Yeah, it I was. Think, awesome. I think they're going to try to put one probably somewhere in like you know Amsterdam, and then you got London, and then maybe somewhere like Spain and Germany, and then just put four teams over there. They play each other, but then, like, we get, like... I think because they have their, you know, we talked about this before, we think they're going to put at least one team because they're already saying and putting, like, 16 games there anyway, so... Well, but yeah, and they have that... They actually retrofitted that stadium for NFL play, so... They're, the infrastructure has slowly been being put in place for it to be more global, so you're 100% right. I think we'll we'll have that soon. be kind of weird when you have to move your family, like, overseas, <laughs> and then you get traded on, like, a Tuesday, and you, like, just got your passport and all your, like, visa shit figured out, and they're like, oh, yeah, you're going back to Houston, like, and you're like... Got him. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hilarious. That is so annoying. They'll probably... Fi- they'll have to have something in the collective bargaining agreement about that, I'm sure. But anyway, I guess uh shout out IDP Army. Love you guys. Thanks for tuning in again to the IDP Hour. Well, give me give me one player... That you your play of the week one play. All right, all right. I'll give the IDP Army a little nugget here, a little start of the week. Um, I'll just I'm just gonna do it quick, lightning round style, because I got one for each position. I had it written down already, so I'm gonna go at linebacker this week. I like Nick Quick, Mike Wazowski. <laughs> Nick Kukowski. Yeah, Nick Kukowski this week. I think he's gonna have a great fill in week for um, Danny Trevathan. And I think that, I mean, depending on Trevathan's injury status and stuff, he could be a good play for a couple of weeks. And he's played well enough to where I don't know how he's not playing more, you know. So for defensive line, I'm going to take Yannick and Gakwe this week. Snaps have been going up the past three or four weeks. Um, plays the Colts. Jacoby Brissett coming off the injury. Now, I mean, they still have an elite offensive line. I don't get it twisted. But Yannick was so close to sacking um, – Deshaun Watson in London a couple of weeks back multiple times. I mean, he's just – he's one of the best pass rushers in the league. So, with Clays Campbell and Josh Allen also on that line and their formations where they're all three out there, I think Yannick has a pretty good chance to put the not-so-mobile yeah, like on the ground. So, I'm liking Yannick and Gakwe this week. And then on the other side of the ball, defensive back for the Colts, Kari Willis, rookie safety. I'm into him. He's been out snapping. Well, he did out snap uh, Clayton Gathers this last week. They've been kind of working him in more and more and Gathers has been kind of they've been kind of playing back and forth with each other. So, I think Willis is slowly beating Gathers out for that job kind of just just over the course of time. So, I, like I, like I think he could be a good play with Nick Foles coming back. Just, you know, who knows what this game is going to be like, but I think you can play him with some confidence. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, for me, uh, my defensive line is uh, Mayo from Oakland. Um, I think that he's a good play. I think that he could step up. I, I really, really want to play Clean Farrell. You know what? Go with my rookie. Flipping, flipping the script. Clean Farrell. There you go. Give me another sack this week. Stepping up for me. Getting hot. Give me, give me a good one. Um, I'm gonna go with your boy, Moses linebacker. Um, your boy that retweeted you the other day. Oh, Demario. Demario Davis. I'm, I'm. I think he has another good week. I really like his play. I think he's a good spot. He's a guy that I think could step up and have a big week. Um, love it. Good play. I, I think he's the guy. Uh, safety. This is a tough one. Because I'm, you know who I want to go with, but he's going against my Browns, so I can't pick Yaminka. I want to. I want to. Oh, he's money. But I can't. Mink, oh, I, got, I said weeks ago, Mink is good for a pick a week, so or big play a week, and usually an interception. So, and he's got. I think he's an interception four weeks in a row now. So, yeah, he leads. Kind of he's got five, and Jason McCourty's got five. So, um, I think for me, I, I think my man. And I said I, I think he's the best cornerback in the league. I think Wentz gets intercepted by uh, Gilmore, Stephon Gilmore. I, I think he's going to char- uh, go after Alshon a lot. Stephon Gilmore, I think, is the best corner in the league. So I think he has one of those big weeks. 
where I'm not messing with Stephon Gilmore. And he's healthy, gets a week off last week. So he's not somebody I'm messing with personally. Time to game plan. Huh? Time to game plan for him. Yeah. I, I, they're scary. So over, overall, like I, I really like your picks. They're pretty solid. Thanks. Yeah, of, too. I like the I like the the cornerback throw in there or Gilmore. I don't really throw a lot of cornerbacks in there, so I mean, for me to throw one, oh, in. you're right. I mean, talk about pick pick pickability pickability. He could definitely have a pick though. Wentz, if they're going to be down, you know, the Patriots are going to put him in a spot, and we've seen this Patriots defense. Their turnover. I mean, there's a turnover. It's a turnover machine. Like it's literally a turnover machine. So yeah, I like Jamie Collins too in that game. So. Uh, let's not get that twisted. Jamie Collins is a beast. So love it. It's gonna well, be fun. But we went over an hour for the first time, I think, in a while. So <laughs> hopefully the IDP army isn't too mad at us. Well, I hope you guys appreciate the show and you know, let's get out another shout out to Full Time Fantasy Podcast Network. Uh great, great shows over there. Go check them out. Um really good group. So yeah. But we're the only IDP. Yeah, we're the best IDP podcast content, all that stuff out there. I mean, we're just we're just grinding, dude. I mean, there's no ulterior motive, there's no secret agenda. It's just we want you guys. I mean, the space has a lot of a lot of noise in it, and we want to cut through that and just give you like this is a good platform, this is a good base, this is good information, and do with it what you will. You know, we're not saying don't listen to somebody else or don't do whatever you want, but we want you to know. You know misses. I mean, I had a miss this week. Blair was a huge miss for me. I, I started him. Yeah, I, I started him too in a dynasty league, and we both got zeros. I mean, it happens. But we're here to uh, go through the struggle with you. You know, curate some information for you guys, and uh, you know, hopefully, lead. We'll all go on to win a, an IDP Army uh, championship this week or this year. Go. So, yeah, love you guys. Right. Until Sunday, remember, let's go, yeah. let's go, let's go, go.